Welcome everyone to our broadcast, our daily broadcast on Kabbalah for the Heretic, in which we are going through cover to cover volume four of the Kabbalah of the Zohar, almost finished with volume four, as we have finished volumes one, two, and three after the past 20 some years every morning going through the Zohar systematically. The Zohar is talking about that there is a level of being a tzaddik that does not need the reassurance of the rainbow. And they are those who have done everything they have done for the sake of God and the world, not for their sake. You'll notice the, the world was punished despite Noah. And in fact, because of Noah. Noah prayed for himself when God told him he was going to flood the world. Noah said, what are you going to do about me? What are you going to do to us and my family? His first thought. And indeed, God said, I'll protect you, but I'm going to let the world have it. I'm going to let the world have it. The absolute opposite is true of when Israel sinned itself. When, when the tzaddik continues placing his emphasis on God and not on himself, God delays any punishment. When a person is only concerned with his ego, God hastens it. So the Zohar says, such a one is he who prays for the world and shields it and not for himself the way Noah did. Such a one is he who prays for the world and shields it like Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai in whose days the world never required the sign of the rainbow, for he was himself a sign. The great hero of the Zohar, the purported uh, recorder of the Zohar, Shimon Bar Yochai, is being described here as the Christ. There was no need for the protection against God by himself. Because that great Shimon Bar Yochai, who was knowingly praying for the world and not for himself, was a hedge against God's anger and wrath. Now, this is talking about, by the way, for all of you in the listening audience, this is not history that we're looking at. We're looking at present day necessity. This is talking about you and me, all of us. It's not talking about them. It's talking about you and me, all of us, who put the ego before everything and do it with such stupidity and ignorance. I am God, <coughs> they say. <coughs> I am in touch with my inner God. Oh, shit. They're in touch with their egos. It is they who keep the world suffering by their ego, all of us, by our ego, every last one of us. In my 40 years of teaching, my emphasis has always been on exposing the ego, mine as well as yours. And I've been repaid for that by people saying, who the hell do you think you are telling me I have an ego? God damn it. The living verbal proof of what I'm saying. We're all like Noah. Oh God, you're going to destroy the world? Well, it deserves it. But what about me? What about me? What about my family? 
Ah, uh, God says, all right, I'll protect you. But your goddamn ego has gotten in the way of my protecting the rest of the world. Today. Not just in Noah's time. But today, now. We have no one to blame for the horrors that are taking place in this world, including the horror of last night and this morning, but ourselves. We allow ourselves to be manipulated by that dark side of God by which we emphasize the ego and not God and not the world and not the suffering of others. We are so damn preoccupied with our own suffering that we never give a thought to the suffering of others or to the world. Or at least we say, we oh yes, I understand. I've got to be, oh I pray for the world all the time. All the time. I, and I know what you're saying. I know, you don't know what I'm saying. Because when push comes to shove, and you are afflicted by God, you pray for yourselves and not for the world. To coin a great cliche, you talk it, but you don't walk it. You talk it until you need to walk it, and then you stop talking it, because all you've done is talk, 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 talk. We're all a bunch of Noahs. Oh, God, yeah. The, they deserve to be destroyed, God. But what about me? What about my family? Says Noah. And to that such a man, the rainbow, the promise of the rainbow was necessary. But to the man who would have said, Oh, God, I beg of you, the way Moses did... When God says to Moses, I am going to destroy the world. I'm going to destroy Israel. Moses doesn't say, oh, but God, yeah, they deserve it. But what about me, God? I, I love you so much. He didn't say that. He prayed to God that God should not destroy the world. He, his ego, was nowhere to be seen in his prayers to God when God told him that he was going to destroy all of Israel, all of mankind, and start all over again with Moses. Moses didn't say, thank you, God, the way Noah would have said and did say, but rather, oh, God, don't do that. Will you spare the world if I find ten righteous men, if I find nine righteous men? He bargains with God, not himself. And you out there listening are not like him, and neither am I. The difference is I know it. I grieve for it about myself. And you assholes out there, you still think you're so goddamn holy. Until you're given an opportunity to be holy. And then you're just as big an asshole as I am and everybody else is. Are you saying that we should be more than you? You're goddamn right, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You should be more than me. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, in whose day the world never required a sign of the rainbow, for he himself was that sign. For if ever punishment was decreed against the world, he could annul it. One day he was sitting at the gate of Leda when he lifted up his eyes and saw the light of the sun darkening three times and black and yellow spots appearing in the sun. S-U-N. He said to his son, S-O-N, Rabbi Eliezer, follow me, my son, and let us see what happened. For of a surety, some punishment is a decreed above, and God desires to let me know. For such a decree is kept 
in suspense 30 days, and God does not carry it out before making it known to the righteous, as it is written, For the Lord will do something, but he revealeth his secret to his servants, the prophets. Now, what he's saying is, this sign has come, but it is not that the world is punished, but it is going to be punished. And God is telling that to this tzaddik, <coughs> to this righteous one, Shimon Bar Yochai, so that he may do something about it for the sake of the world and for God. And he has 30 days in which to do it. <coughs> for such a decree is kept in suspense 30 days, and God does not carry it out before that time. For the Lord, quote, for the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret to his servants, the prophets, unquote. And they came into a vineyard where they saw a serpent advancing like a coil of fire along the ground. Rabbi Shimon shook his garments and brought his hand down on the head of the serpent which then, then came to a halt and threw its tongue, and though its tongue was still moving, he said to it, Serpent! Serpent! Go and tell that supernatural serpent that Rabbi Shimon is still alive! Serpent! Serpent! Go and tell the uh, supernal serpent that even today, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is still alive. The serpent then put its head into a hole in the ground. He said, I ordain that just as this serpent has returned to its hole in the ground, so the supernal serpent shall return to the hollow of the great abyss. Look at that. Shimon Bar Yochai is told by God that God is going to send a terrible punishment upon the world. Shimon Bar Yochai's first Response is not, oh my God, not me, Lord, not me, Lord. Look at me, I'm, I love you so much, I've always been so good. No. His first impulse was to make sure that was so, and then having made sure of that, to do what needed to be done supernally to prevent the serpent from bringing its poison into the world. Rabbi Shimon then began to pray. As they were praying, they heard a voice say, You ministers of evil, return to your place. You band of ruffians, abide not in the world. For Rabbi Shimon by Yochai annuls your power. Happy art thou. Happy art thou, Rabbi Shimon that thy master is solicitous, is solicitous for thy honor at all times above that of all other men. Wake up! Wake up, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai! You are still alive! But asleep. Come again! as you once were. God requires it, needs it. Particularly today. Particularly today. By this time, Rabbi Shimon saw that the sun was shining again and the blackness had passed. And he said, Surely the world is safe again. Everyone listen to me. The world is not safe again. It's not. And the cause of that is that not one of us 
is willing to offer himself as a sacrifice in place of the world for the anger of God. As Yeshua bar Miriam did. Take me, God, not them. And then when it came time for him to actually show that, he did. He suffered and endured the horrible punishment God had planned on the world. And annulled that anger and punishment for a time. Then the ego of man came up again and grew stronger and stronger and stronger until now, again, the world needs the world needs the suffering tzaddik who offers himself, in fact, as a substitute to receive the anger and wrath of God that God intends to send upon the world. Christians will say, oh, well, we say that. Christ died for our sins. No, that's not what you're saying. You're saying Christ died because we were immoral. I am not saying that. Christ died because he was willing to kill his ego rather than have God come to kill the egos of mankind. The ego is the enemy. The ego is the enemy. Your ego is the enemy. The ego of the evil ones feeds on the evil egos of the innocent ones. Look at Hitler. Look at Hitler. His ego fed on the egos of the German people. It got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because of them and their egos. And I'm afraid to say the same is true this morning as it was then. God, please, I pray to you, send us a Shimon by Yochai. Almighty God, I pray to you, send us a Noah, not a Noah. Do not send us a Noah, but send us a Shimon by Yochai. That concludes the program for this morning. God willing, if there is a tomorrow, we'll continue. Let me just stop here and ask if any of you who are attending the recording session to ask any questions, if you have any questions, raise your hand. David, go ahead, or comment. <clears throat> Let me just say, the Holy Spirit is putting itself upon my heart now to tell you, it's saying the world will not be saved until there is at least one who says, God, take me instead of them, and who means it. And when the opportunity comes for him to be taken, he takes that opportunity to be taken, just as Yeshua by Miriam did. Take me, Lord, not them, and mean it, and mean it. And when the time comes for that to be done, he still means it. He doesn't back off from it. Oh, oh God, you know I didn't, I didn't really mean it that way. I hope that's sinking in. David says, today's program could not be more apropos. It is the selfish who pray only for their own family and their own skin color and bring great wrath upon the rest of us. Certainly we need tzaddikim, well, maybe even just one, to pray for the rest of us to awaken God's mercy upon us. And to mean it. Not just to pray for us. Let me... Let me, let me really expand on my point, David. You're not incorrect. You're right. But it's not just that the, this righteous one will pray for us. The righteous one will say and mean, Lord, punish me and not them. For your sake and for their sake, punish me 
and not them. Crucify me and not them. And mean it. And when God indeed brings that crucifixion upon him, he accepts it. That's what's needed. Not just to pray for mankind. You see what I'm saying? That's true. But if you don't come away from this morning's broadcast without that thought, that it must be a man who says, God, punish me and not them, and means it, and when the time comes for him to be punished in their place, he does it with knowledge, with kavana and intention. That is what Yeshua by Miriam did. That is what the man whom they called Jesus, the Jew whom they called Jesus, did. He said, Father, take me and not them. Father, take me and not them. And when God said, all right, I'm taking you. I'm going to nail you on the cross. I am going to wreck every anger I have on you. Physically, psychologically, spiritually. And Jesus said, yes, Father, do it. I mean it. Take me instead of them. It will only take one sadik, not many, to accomplish the salvation of the world. In that way, the problem is the ego gradually fights back, just as Satan did. Satan is the ego. That's who we're talking about. Satan fights back, fights Jesus, and finally wins out. The ego fights back. It's banished for a while, but it comes back. Look at this. Look at the new age mentality. Look at the old age mentality. Look at these people who call themselves liberals and progressives. And look at the people who call themselves arch conservatives. They are furthering the anger and wrath of God because it is their egos that they are focusing on and not God and not the people. To die for the people. Read my essay. Hopefully there'll be a tomorrow morning. I pray to God that we'll all be here for it. And we'll give our continuation of this broadcast then. And until then, go with God, not your ego or mine. Amen. That ends the program, David, for, for this morning's broadcast.